Have you ever wondered where diseases like COVID-19 come from? What do animals have to do with it? And what can we do to prevent future pandemics? Hello, friends of facts, and welcome to Fantastic Studies and Where to Find Them. Join us for some exciting research from scientific papers. Today is all about emerging zoonotic diseases, like the new coronavirus. Only last year, Maguras and colleagues published a paper on where zoonotic diseases may come from and why we should rethink how we as humans interact with animals. So let's have a look. Humans have always coexisted with wild and domestic animals. Not surprisingly, we have therefore occasionally been affected by their diseases. A disease or infection that spills over from animals to humans is called zoonosis. Zoonoses take up a large percentage of newly identified and existing diseases in humans. There are currently over 200 known types of zoonoses. Surely you have heard of some. Think of, for example, AIDS. Borreliosis or rabies. Zoonotic pathogens include bacteria, viruses, fungi and parasites. Examples for zoonotic bacteria are Borrelia, EHEC or Salmonella. Zoonotic viruses cause for example influenza, rabies or well COVID-19. Zoonotic fungi infect our skin, nails or even hair causing tongue twisting diseases like dermatophytosis or histoplasmosis. And then there are zoonotic parasites. For example, malaria is caused by a parasite being transmitted via mosquitoes from animals to humans. Zoonotic pathogens can latch onto us from an animal directly. Or they can hitchhike using an intermediate host. For example, mosquitoes or ticks carry pathogens from one animal to another. And it's not like the animals themselves need to get a fever from it. That might just be us. If worst comes to worst, zoonotic pathogens cause recurring outbreaks like the Ebola virus, or, don't we all know it, lead to global pandemics. In recent decades, humans have intensified their interactions with animals, making disease spillover and possibly pandemics ever more likely. Zoonotic disease spillover happens where humans and animals meet. Scientists call this the human-animal interface. Those interfaces include wet markets and other live animal markets, intensive wildlife farming, wildlife hunting and consumption, and also livestock and pets. Wet markets are very common throughout, for example, Asia and Africa, where they are still the preferred source of fresh food and especially meat. At wet markets, live animals are sold and slaughtered for food or medicine. You can find anything from fish and shrimps to birds to mammals and sometimes even reptiles or porcupines. Eating wild animals is a symbol of wealth and their meat is perceived to be more natural and nutritious than meat from farmed animals. It is very difficult to sell food on those markets under good hygienic conditions. Animals are usually kept in crowded spaces and under stressful conditions. Especially in wild animals, this can suppress their immune system, giving pathogens ample opportunity to rake havoc. With little control of such markets, we don't even know half of what infests or inhabits wet animal markets. Some of the animals offered at wet markets come from wildlife farms. Several wild animals like deer, rodents, crivets and fur mammals are bred to provide income and protein worldwide, often without proper quality standards or controls and never mind animal welfare considerations. Again, stressful living conditions, lack of knowledge about their biology and bad hygiene makes them vulnerable to all kinds of diseases. In some regions of the world, like the tropics, animals are more likely hunted rather than farmed. Wild animal hunting is not only an important food source, but also supplies income through the sales of meat, big game tourism and trading products for traditional medicine. On top of that, wildlife is also valued for traditional hunting and ceremonial events. Something we are much more familiar with in the Western world are domestic animals, that is pets as well as livestock. They come into contact not only with humans, but also with wildlife. Intensive livestock farming is increasing worldwide. In addition, cutting down natural forests and claiming the formerly animal-inhabited land for agriculture and housing 
we have created even more shared spaces between humans, domestic and wild animals. And yet again, this creates more and more opportunities for spillover and the creation of new zoonotic diseases. To sum it up, any person handling live or dead animals at wet markets or farms during hunting, trade or cooking is exposed to potentially zoonotic pathogens lingering in animal carcasses and body fluids. The more we mingle with wild animals, the more opportunities for spillover we create. And right now, we create those opportunities at an excessive rate. Let's say we want to change that and prevent or at least prepare for future pandemics. What can we do? Well, we can rethink how we interact with animals. First, we can use resources sustainably. Second, we can improve animal living conditions. Third, Let's treat the cause, not the symptom. And fourth, we need more surveillance and research. We face a growing population and need for resources on the one hand, but want to safeguard biodiversity and our environment on the other hand. The use of sustainable resources could reduce land use, biodiversity loss, stress on our environment and our contact with wild and disease-bearing animals. Sure enough, we also wish to respect animal welfare, and yet we continue to keep them in confined spaces and under stressful and unhygienic conditions. If we want to prevent emerging zoonotic diseases, we need to start paying attention to the living conditions of animals on farms and wet markets. When a new disease arises, or any new issue really, human beings are most efficient at treating the symptoms, but tend to neglect the underlying cause. This makes it difficult to introduce real change. For example, as long as people believe that wildlife meat is better quality and great for natural remedies, as long as they remain ignorant of the drawbacks, the situation will not improve. More research should therefore be dedicated to the prevention of emerging zoonotic diseases by improving conditions at human-animal interfaces. Such research must keep the different culture systems and reasons for wildlife exploitation in mind in order to propose policies and regulations which could work in real life. The authors propose that wildlife farms should be monitored and regulated just like any other agricultural system to control animal welfare and good hygienic conditions. Let's wrap it all up. If you have ever wondered where diseases like COVID-19 come from, then now you know. In the end, it is us humans driving the emergence of new zoonotic diseases. We have grown in numbers, globalised trade and travel, and use Earth's resources unsustainably. All of this has us heading towards irreversible global crises like climate change and pandemics. What do animals have to do with it? Zoonotic diseases are brought to us by animals. Therefore, the way we interact with them is critical to the solution. And what can we do to prevent future pandemics? The authors of this paper appeal to all of us to promote sustainability and take better care of human-animal interfaces. In addition to productivity, we must also focus on their health and ours. Are you still curious and want to learn more about the history and prevention of pandemics? Have a look at this great science talk then. Thanks for watching and see you soon.